After a couple months of testing, I determined that the Ecobee 3 Lite is the slightly better thermostat, especially for iPhone users. Out of the box, both thermostats will help you save money on your energy bills. But Ecobee has more room for energy savings because it's more customizable and it has the option to add on room sensors, which will track the temperature and occupancy. If you wanna learn how I reached my conclusion, keep watching as I go through four different categories and then wrap this video up with a which one is best for you section. The Nest is the easiest smart thermostat to install because you don't need to touch your HVAC system. The Nest needs power to operate, but it doesn't require constant power because there are two AAA batteries. In most situations, the C-wire won't be required for installation. The installation shouldn't take longer than 15 minutes because there are step-by-step -step instructions inside the Google Home app. The Ecobee installation is smooth as long as you follow the steps in the Ecobee app. Ecobee requires the C-wire for constant power, so if your house doesn't have one, you'll need to install the included power extender kit. The power extender kit requires opening up your HVAC system, then moving wires around to create an artificial C-wire. It's safe, not overly difficult, and Ecobee provides a step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you don't have the C-wire and you're not comfortable opening up your HVAC system to install the power extender kit, Nest will just make more sense for you. Nest products typically have exceptional build quality. The iconic Nest Learning Thermostat has a glass display with smooth polycarbonate sides, and it has a substantial weight to it. The new Nest Thermostat comes in four different colors, but it's made with cheap plastic materials. The front display uses a shiny reflected material, which makes it hard to see during the day or when you're more than a few feet away. And the reflection from your lights can make it hard to see too. And even if you could see it, the display goes blank after just a few seconds to preserve battery life until it detects motion again. Unfortunately, it's $15 for the Nest Trim Kit faceplate, while the Ecobee comes with one for free. And you may need this because the Nest is small and it might not cover up all your pre-existing holes. I think Nest sold their soul with this thermostat along with the Nest E from previous generations. It just feels more like a toy than a premium thermostat. But this is probably a me issue more than a you issue because it's $100 less than the premium Nest Learning thermostat. It's probably fine for most people. If you can get over the design flaws, you're faced with a pretty poor user experience. The new Nest thermostat uses Google Soli technology rather than better options like a touchscreen or a spin dial. The Soli sensor uses your hand movements to determine what action you performed. A motion down decreases the temperature, while a slide up increases the temperature. And the menu system only provides basic options, but this is probably just fine. The Soli technology is just not intuitive and it's a little bit glitchy. It feels more like a cost cutting strategy rather than an improvement in user experience. But the good news is that once you have your schedule and your geofence set up, and everything's good, you shouldn't have to touch the thermostat very often. Reed from Smart Home Solver, he and I actually disagree on the design. He likes it a lot and I don't, but we're on the same page with the Soli sensor. It's just, it's not great. And if you haven't checked out his review yet, I'll leave a link below to go watch it after you watch mine. He did a great job. Echo B3 Lite has a black front display and it looks techy. It always catches the eyes of my friends who come over for the first time. With Ecobee, the temperature is displayed in big font and it can be seen from far away. You'll also get the time and the outside temperature on the display as well. It has a touchscreen with an advanced menu system that mimics the phone app. The temperature can be changed with a swipe up or a swipe down and it's very easy. The temperature can be controlled inside the Google Home app at any point, whether you're home or away. The Google Home app is easy to navigate and has more advanced menus and it's much more user-friendly than using the physical thermostat. I like the Google app a lot, and if you're already a Google family, Nest will be awesome because you won't need to download a new app. The thermostat will just get placed with all your other devices. Nest has three preset temperature options. Comfort for when you're home, eco when you're away, and sleep. You can create additional presets, but most people should be just fine with the three provided. Once you pick the proper temperature for each preset, then you'll build your schedule around these. You'll pick the time that you want each preset to come on and then it'll keep running until the next scheduled preset. And a tiny advantage over Ecobee is that the presets can be scheduled in 15 minute increments rather than 30 minutes. My favorite part about Nest in the Google Home app is the energy dashboard. 
It shows you how long your system runs for each hour, and then it has cumulative usage as well. The Ecobee app has the same interface as the thermostat. Ecobee scheduling is dead simple. It has three modes, sleep, home, and away. You tap the plus button, select the days that apply, and then enter a time when you want the setting to kick in, and then you add it to sleep, home, or away mode. It also has a vacation mode that lets you set the time of your departure and arrival back home. Inside the portal, there's a home IQ feature that provides tons of data that isn't on the phone app. You get runtime reports, community comparisons, and home efficiency reports. Ecobee is compatible with Alexa and Google, but what sets it apart from Nest is its compatibility with Apple's HomeKit. If you're an iPhone user, Ecobee is a must have because you can access it with Siri from the control center or inside the Apple Home app. Unfortunately, Ecobee servers seem to have downtime often. I don't have any footage for it because it hasn't happened to me in a few months, but it was happening a bunch of times over the three years that I've owned one. I could almost always fix the issue by just force quitting the app and reopening it, and then it would be fine. Nest has an occupancy sensor on it, but to give it a proper sense of whether you're home or not, you'll need to give it access to your phone so that it knows exactly where you are. With access to your phone's location, it'll help Nest figure out when people are home. Then when it sees no one is home, it'll switch into eco mode automatically. If your Nest is in a popular location in your house, the combination of the presence sensor on the base plus giving it access to one phone should be enough for it to understand if you're home or not. But if your thermostat is in a random hallway or in a place that doesn't get much action, everybody in your household will probably need the Google Home app installed for it to get proper home and away detection with your geofence. The newest Nest thermostat won't learn your patterns like the older Nest learning thermostat, but a lot of people don't like this feature much anyways. I've never been a huge fan of it because it doesn't work great with inconsistent schedules. And if you have a consistent schedule, just entering your schedule in manually should be just fine. You don't need Google's fancy machine learning to do that for you. The bottom line is that the newest Nest is the best value smart thermostat to save on your energy costs. Ecobee 3 Lite is a bit dumber out of the box than Nest because it doesn't include an occupancy sensor. It has no sense if you're home or away, so it won't do anything for you automatically, it'll just rely on the schedule that you give to it. If you have a consistent schedule, this is fine and a non-factor, but if you're in and out at all kinds of different times, setting up a geofence will be essential for you. To do this, you'll create an automation based on your phone's location, which will trigger Ecobee to go in home or away mode. Home and away automations can be set up in the Ecobee app, and the size of the radius can be customized to whatever size you want, unlike Nest. Once your phone leaves the radius, it can trigger a way mode, then trigger home mode once you re-enter the radius, which means your system will start up just before arriving back home. For Android users, each member of your household will need the Ecobee app installed on their phone to get proper home and away detection. For iPhone users with a HomeKit hub, each member of your household will need Apple's Home app, which is already built into the iPhone. Ecobee works with all major smart home platforms, including Alexa, HomeKit, Google, SmartThings, Wink, Harmony, If This Then That, and Vera. So this gives you endless possibilities for automations inside your house. There are two other ways that Ecobee differs from Nest. Ecobee lets you edit the temperature swing anywhere from a half a degree all the way up to three degrees. With the Nest, it's stuck at one, which is fine, but I prefer a swing of like 1.5 to two. So with a two point swing and my heat set to 65, the heat won't turn on until the temperature hits 63 in my house. An increase in the swing means that my loud furnace runs less often. I'm definitely not an HVAC guy, but having your equipment run less frequently, but for longer periods, sounds more efficient to me. And if you're comfortable with a variance of temperatures inside your house, I'd say that this can probably save you a little bit of money but I'm not smart enough to figure out how to test that properly. The next big difference from Nest is the Ecobee smart sensors. Nest doesn't stand a chance against Ecobee with a system with smart sensors. It makes the system so much smarter. With a smart sensor, Ecobee activates away mode after two consecutive hours of no motion detected. So if you buy a couple of these, you can actually probably forget about geofencing altogether and just rely on the sensors. These sensors detect occupancy and temperature. My favorite Ecobee feature is called Follow Me, and this gets enabled when you add smart sensors. Follow Me takes the temperature from each sensor that has detected motion, 
and creates an average of those temperatures. Sensors without occupancy won't be counted against the average. So basically only the rooms with people in them will count towards the average temperature. And for home, away, and sleep modes, you can choose which sensors should be used for the temperature. And this is where the real magic happens. So my bedroom gets really hot at nighttime with the door shut compared to the rest of the house. So I put a smart sensor in my bedroom and then for my sleep mode, only the bedroom sensor is used for the temperature. So where my thermostat is in the living room, if that's really cool out there, that's irrelevant to the equation. It only uses my bedroom's temperature. So at nighttime, my room stays at a cool 61 degrees the entire night. Smart sensors definitely aren't necessary, but to maximize savings and comfort, I think they're essential. And they'll be great for big houses or old houses with rooms with varying temperatures. That way you can get an average of all the rooms together and not just where your thermostat is. Or maybe your thermostat is in a hallway where you don't really care about that specific temperature. So a smart sensor would work there. I just think it's silly to get an Ecobee without getting a smart sensor. Get Ecobee 3 Lite if you're an iPhone user and you wanna control your thermostat with Siri or the Apple Home app. With multiple smart sensors placed around your house, they'll detect occupancy and temperature and work their magic. The only major downside to Ecobee is that if you don't have the C-Wire already installed, it'll require you to open up your HVAC system and install the power extender kit. And that might be too much work for some. Get the newest Nest thermostat if you wanna save money on your energy bill at the most affordable price. The Google Home app is easy to navigate, and if you're already a Google Home user, you won't have to download any more apps. But unfortunately, the design of the Nest thermostat, along with the user experience that comes with it, are just not great. And Nest isn't compatible with many smart home platforms, most notably Siri and the Home app. So what about the premium smart thermostats? So the Nest Learning thermostat is usually about $100 more than the newest Nest thermostat. From a design perspective, it has a much better build quality. And it also has a built-in learning feature that will adjust the temperature based on your patterns. But a lot of smart home nerds aren't a fan of this because they want more control and I'm with them. The Ecobee Smart Thermostat, also known as Ecobee 5, is really good. It has a built-in Alexa speaker, but it's kind of lame. What are the chances that I'll want a smart assistant right where my thermostat is? Probably not very high. But unlike the Ecobee 3 Lite, the Ecobee 5 has a built-in occupancy sensor and it comes with one smart sensor. So that'll give you two total sensors for occupancy and two for temperature. Ecobee 5 is what I use and what I love, but I definitely keep Alexa disabled. And I can do a full comparison video of the Ecobee 5 and the Nest Learning Thermostat if that interests you, but I've written about it before, so I'll leave a link to that below. But do let me know if you want me to make a video too. I can pump that out quickly. But that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching, I'm out.